Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we're bringing you another weekly vlog. What are you doing? Wait, what are you doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm measuring up where the vivarium's going to go in the new reptile room. We've still got to pour the ceiling in. We've got the insulation, ceiling, floor covering. Tidy up. And then it'll be ready to move them in. We need to work out where it's all going to go though. Center, the bald eagle Wurzel, he's molting well now. The golden eagle's molting, and they're basically chilling out and resting now while the coronavirus goes on. If you're watching this in the future, Google coronavirus <laughs> 50 years from now, who knows what it is. Um, yeah, when they're resting, they're molting because they've got easy life. What are we gonna do now? I'm gonna carry on laying some of those little slabs I've shown you last time, cutting those into the ground. George is going to mow the lawn again because obviously things keep growing. Life goes on for most of us and most things, as you can imagine. Just very funny times. So I am just cleaning out the eagles. Usually on these blogs, it's you and it's you. It's not you. Well, it is you, but it's me and Georgia here doing the work here at Icarus Falconry. And as I said last time, it's a bit cheeky, really, because I do a lot of the maintenance at the moment. Georgia scrubs out a lot of the animals, but it's Joe and Emily that have been really keeping those birds going, ready for you guys to fly. Let's go and see where Joe is and what she's flying, because what we've been doing is literally shift work. So with social distancing, we're not usually up here at any one time. It's different people on different days because of the coronavirus. But all hands on deck today, but we are distancing. Let's see what she's doing. So this is Horizon, the Chilean Blue Eagle Buzzard. And we've got him out flying today. It's not perfect conditions for him. He likes a lot of wind um, so that he can get up in the breeze and then stoop down to our glove. Um, so it's not perfect for him, but we gave him a bit of exercise. And hopefully, uh, if you come on a full day, you'd be able to fly him yourselves. And if the weather's brilliant, there is nothing better than flying this bird. He absolutely takes your breath away. Hi, you guys. We're at Icarus Falconry. We set the moth trap last night. Full moon, pretty rubbish, but it's a bit cloudy, so we thought we'd give it a go. So why don't you come and share our excitement and see what's in here? I haven't got a clue about moths. There's hundreds and hundreds of species of moths in Britain compared to 50 or 60 species of butterfly. Moths are amazing. Let's have a look, but the first thing I can see in the top of the trap, guys, it's a cock chafer. There's several of them in there, so I'm gonna be careful, but come and have a look. Let's take the lid off. There's one. Have a look at this guy here. Look at this. It's not a moth. It's a beetle. A cockchafer. Or maybug. Because guess what? They fly during May. This month. Oh, look at this one. Huge antennae. Flying around. Oh, have a look at that. Look at that. BE day, guys. We missed the red arrows, but we've still got some planes. <gasps> but hey, they're man-made. Let's look at the natural stuff, it's cooler. Let's see if this Maybug will take off and fly. Huge antennae, mostly flying in the evening. They're attracted to light, like moths. Very loud and buzzing. This one's not half as excitable as the oh. first one. Oh, there's another one underneath as well. There's two more. So these guys spend their most of their life as a larva, living in the ground, eating roots of plants not, and trees, not really the gardener's friend. And then in May, they, they're pupated, they come out of their pupa and they fly to find mates. Here's another one. So the moth trap, it's a beetle trap. Let's see what else we've got, guys. We've got some great moths in here. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you can tell me what they are. Come and look at the beauty of moths. Look at the pattern on this one. Oh, look at this. One of our little solitary bees has gone in there at night. Come on. We'll give you a little drink. We'll leave him there and give him a drink. I don't think he's high-fiving me. No, nah, he's actually saying, keep your distance or I'll sting you. Another little moth in there, look. Can you see those? Yeah. Oh, look, a muslin moth. My friend Zay, if you're watching, it's not a muslin moth, it's a muslin moth. Look at that. And look at this beauty. Look at the patterns on that. Out of this world. Obviously, brilliant camouflage, but to us, beautiful oh, patterns. Easy. Not a great haul tonight. Get ready. Well, what's that be? Look at this one. <laughs> Another one. So all through the year, different species of moss fly at different times of the year. All part of their life cycle. So you often get groups of the same moss. Look at this guy here. Look at this guy here. Wait, <laughs> it's not a moth at all. Look at this big antennae. Wow. A bit disappointing on the moth front, George. Oh look, here's a good beetle. Have a look at this one, George. This is a kind of burying beetle. Those animals that find those beetles that find dead animals, <gasps> bury them for their larva to feast upon. Well, wow, so oh. these guys, these guys do a vital role in the ecosystem, clearing away dead animals, burying them in the ground, and then basically eating them. Again, look at the amazing. Have a look at the amazing antennae. All the better for smelling with. It's more of a beetle trap tonight, I think. That full moon, guys, didn't help us at all. My bright light wasn't the brightest light around last night. A bit disappointing, but do you know what? Just finding two or three moths and some cracking beetles, it's not really disappointing. Stay tuned for next time we set this trap. We'll see what we can find you.